Ever since Gran Turismo 7 hauled its way onto PSVR 2 back when it launched, I've said that the definitive way to play this game is on a wheel and pedals, and I still think that it is, but since moving to university, I couldn't bring that with me. There simply wasn't enough space and it was just too impractical to bring here. So I thought I was stuck to normal joystick controls, which frankly, I kind of hate. <laughs> I feel like it's too sluggish, too slow. It feels like there's always drag whenever you try and turn. But if you don't have a wheel, you can kind of rejoice because there's an option for you. And there's two paths to take down this option. First of all, you can go into the settings and enable the motion controls six axis gyroscopic function, I think, along those lines. On screen right now is how to activate it, and essentially it turns your controller into a Mario Kart Wii style controller where you tilt it to turn. But due to the gyroscopic sensors in the DualSense controller, it works a lot better than those old racing games. It's quite precise, it's quite sensitive, and if you set your hands down on a flat surface to support the controller, you can use it like a wheel. And the second option is you can actually buy an attachment for the DualSense to turn it into a pseudo sort of wheel where you can stick it down to your desk, attach it that way, and use it flat and place your controller in that little wheel arch and use it like a steering wheel. Ultimately, you don't have any pedals on this thing, but I'm actually willing to try it out in the future. So if you guys are interested in that and interested in how that would function and work, I'm open to giving it a shot. Let me know if you think that'd be interesting to cover. For today's video though, we're just using the DualSense six axis motion control function to drive around in Gran Turismo and see how it feels compared to a wheel, which is what I've been using for about 30 hours in game. So anyway, enjoy. Time trial for now, because we'll go for the Nordschleifer. Because I, I don't want to jump in in a race and not know how to control my car. Oh, okay. That is quite sensitive. That's very sensitive. Because, like, I'm not really tilting that much, and it's like, it's going full 180 degrees. Maybe it's designed for me to kind of, like, hold it. Ah, I see. So it kind of wants me to have it flat on the desk a little bit. It doesn't want you to go, like, full, full Mario Kart style, you know. I think with one of those attachments you can get on Amazon, this would actually be pretty good. And I know some people do actually play like this. And if you don't have a wheel, it's kind of an it's you know it's an option if you want to. Oh my god, still a bit of getting used to. But yeah, if you don't have a wheel, it's it's an option. It's weird. It's really weird at first. I'm not gonna lie. I'm still getting used to this. But I just can't really control uh, the car with the with the joystick. It just doesn't really work for me. I've tried it once, and I'm I'm never gone back after going for a steering wheel. Obviously, you know, it doesn't feel as natural as a wheel. You don't get the force speed, you know, the force feedback that you do on a wheel. But you do get the haptics, which are also really good. And it's better than nothing. And I know you can get those wheel attachments off Amazon that turn it into, like, kind of a pseudo steering wheel. So... And I mean... To experience the beauty of Gran Turismo 7, I would say this is very much worth it. It's still, I still feel like the sensitivity is slightly too high for what I want to do with the controller, but if you kind of lay your hands on the desk in front of you and kind of just tilt a little bit, you get that more precise movement. Which is good, which is good. Yeah, I mean, it feels pretty good. Especially with the haptic triggers of the PS5, it's... it's it has its trade-offs, you know. I would I would go with a wheel every single day because, you know, this doesn't really compare in that respect, but you know. If you don't have an option for a wheel. It's good. I'm impressed. Awesome. <laughs> you know it'd be cool if we had dual sense support. Sorry, not dual sense support. Sense controller support. Um, and you could just kind of grab the wheel with your VR hands and do it that way. Wouldn't that be neat? I think that would be neat. Yeah, just testing the uh, the head haptics are there. That's all. That's all. One of the um, the benefits of using a controller as well, actually, is that you can use the VR showroom, um, which you can't really navigate very well with a wheel. Like I can move around a lot easier. You know, you can. Have a look at your car properly. 
Oh my god, this is such a cool area as well. Alright, calm down, Subaru. Yeah, it kind of lets you jump in and take a look at everything a lot easier. Oh, that was a bad start. But the, the Model S has got some acceleration on it. Okay, I'm feeling the handling right now. Is it? Oh my god, this is just a circle, isn't it? Oh no, no it's not, no it's not. Oh my god, that's close. Oh my god. Contact? I, I'm not... He looked at me. I'm not exactly... Uh, oh my god, I don't know what gear to go in as well, because there's only one gear it's drive. I still haven't got the hang of the turning just yet, but it's fine. All I know is I'm going too fast for some of these corners. Full, fully, fully turn. Fully extend that turn. Okay. Oh my god, I turned too much. So yeah, that, that turning point when you get to the 180 degree area, it's very quick. Like that kind of comes at you from nowhere. And I mean, no matter what you're using in terms of controller or wheel, the game doesn't look any worse. <laughs> you're still getting that same VR visual experience, which is awesome. You really do get into it now. When you get used to the turning, it does feel natural. It really is the lighting that makes it. When you see a car go from in shadow to in sunlight, and it reacts like it should, it's so good. I think I do miss, you know, you, you don't have pedals, that's the thing. You're still accelerating with a controller, with, you know, your fingers. And that'd be the same even if you got one of like the, the little wheel attachments for your controller. It's still, because it sticks on the table. And your controller just sits in it. And they're really not that expensive. Um, obviously, you don't get any pedals with it. It's still the same controls. They're just fitting it inside a wheel to make it feel more robust so it doesn't move. Because, like, currently my hands are just kind of free to move about. Which can make turning a little bit more difficult if you don't have something to stabilize on. But my god, does it feel better than um, the normal stick turning. It really does. So there we have it. I'm actually thoroughly impressed with how this functions. It's quite precise, even though I found it a little bit too sensitive at first. And I'm actually really curious about those wheels now. I feel like the turning might not align completely perfectly, but I'm willing to give it a shot. And to be honest, they're really not that expensive compared to an actual wheel setup. And rightfully so, there's nothing really in there. It's just a plastic housing, but it might make it feel a bit more robust and steady. So I'm willing to give that a shot and let you know how that experience is on the PSVR 2. Does it fill in for a wheel? Because when you're sitting there with a wheel and pedals, you really feel like you're in the car when you've got the headset on. There's not really any experience quite like it. So I'm interested to see how it parallels that, if it can at all. But anyway, once again, thank you all for watching. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all.